Hello everyone. So this is chapter eight, part two, and Brian is dreaming. And it says, this time it was not of his mother or the secret, but of his father at first. And then he dreamed of his friend, Terry. In the initial bit of the dream, his father was standing at the side of the living room looking at him and it was clear from his expression that he was trying to tell Brian something. His lips moved, moved but there was no sound, not even a whisper. He waved his hands at Brian, made gestures in front of his face as if he were scratching something, and he worked to make a word with his mouth. But at first, Brian could not see it. Then the lips made a mmm shape, but no sound came. Brian could not hear it, he could not understand it, and he wanted so badly. It was so important to understand his father and to know what he was saying. He was trying to help, trying so hard, and when Brian couldn't understand, he looked cross the way he did when Brian asked questions more than once, and he faded. Brian's father then faded into a fog place. Brian could not see, and the dream was almost over, or it seemed to be, when Terry came. He was not gesturing to Brian, but was sitting in the park at a bench looking at a barbecue pit, and for a time, nothing happened. Then he got up and poured some charcoal from a bag into the cooker, then some starter fluid. Then he took a flick type of lighter and lit the fluid. When it was burning and the charcoal was at last getting hot, he turned, noticing Brian for the first time in the dream. He turned and smiled and pointed to the fire as if to say, see, a fire but it meant nothing to Brian except that he wished he had a fire. He saw a grocery sack on the table next to Terry. Brian thought it must contain hot dogs and chips and mustard and he could think only of the food, but Terry shook his head and pointed again to the fire. And twice more, he pointed to the fire, Brian, made Brian see the flames and Brian felt his frustration and anger rise. And he thought, all right, all right, I see the fire, but so what? I don't have a fire, I don't know about fire. I know I need a fire, I know that. His eyes opened and there was a light at the cave, a gray dim light of morning. He wiped his mouth and tried to move his leg, which had stiffened like wood. There was thirst and hunger and he ate some raspberries from the jacket. They had spoiled a bit, seemed softer and mushier, but still had a rich sweetness. <coughs> he crushed the berries against the roof of his mouth with his tongue and drank the sweet juice as it ran down his throat. A flash of metal caught his eye and he saw his hatchet in the sand where he had thrown it at the porcupine. He scooped it up, <coughs> wincing a bit when he bent his stiff leg and crawled to where the hatchet lay. He picked it up and examined it and saw a chip in the top of the head. The nick wasn't large, but the hatchet was important to him. It was his only tool and he should never have thrown it. We should keep it in, he should keep it in his hand and make a tool of some kind to help push an animal away. Make a staff, he thought, or a lance and save the hatchet. Something came then, a thought as he held the hatchet, something about the dream and his father and Terry, but he couldn't quite pin it down. Ah, he scrambled out and stood in the morning sun and stretched his back muscles and his sore legs. The hatchet was still in his hand, and as he stretched and raised it over his head, he caught the first rays of morning sun. The first faint light hit the, hit the silver of the hatchet, and it flashed a brilliant gold light like fire. That is it, he thought. That's what he, they were trying to tell me in the dream. Fire, the hatchet was key to it all. When he threw the hatchet at the porcupine in the cave and missed and hit the stone wall, it had showered sparks, a golden shower of sparks in the dark, as golden as the fire, as golden with fire as the sun was now in the sky. The hatchet was the answer. That's what his father and Terry had been trying to tell him. Somehow he knew he could get fire from the hatchet. The sparks would make the fire. Brian went down into the shelter and studied the wall. It was some form of chalky granite or sandstone, but embedded in it were large pieces of darker stone, a harder, darker stone. It only took him a moment to find where the hatchet had struck. The steel had nicked into the edge of one of the darker stone pieces. Brian turned the head backward so he would strike it with the, rear flat, with the flat rear of the hatchet and hit the black rock gently. Too gently and nothing happened. He struck it harder, a glancing blow, and two or three weak, spark, weak sparks skipped off the rocks but died immediately. 
He swung harder, held the hatchet so it would hit a longer sliding blow, and the black rock exploded in fire. Sparks flew so heavily that several of them skittered and jumped on the sand beneath the rock. He smiled and struck it again and again. There could be fire here, he thought. I will have a fire here, he thought, and struck again. I will have a fire from the hatchet. And that's the end of chapter eight. I hope that you enjoyed that.